Hi guys, I'm David with MediaLock.net, and today we're going to be reviewing the Canon XC10 4K camera. Now this camera came out about a month and a half, two months ago. I've had it for the last 30 days, and I've used it just about every day. I went on a month-long trip around the U.S. to a bunch of different states, one of my favorite places, Moab, Utah, and I took this with me, and I got some amazing shots with it. Um, this camera is, is pretty impressive for what it is at the $2,500 mark. Now this is not a DSLR, this is more of a dedicated video camera. It's very small and compact as you guys can see. Uh, the lens does not detach, so you have a lens that ranges from 24 millimeters all the way up to 240 millimeters. Now at 24 millimeters it is a 2.8 lens, but at 50 millimeters, it hits an f4, and then when you get all the way up to 240, fully extended. When it's fully extended, it is a f5.6. So it's a 2.8 to 5.6 lens that's on it. As you guys can see, it is on there permanently. There is no detaching it. Um, the camera, as you notice, is, is fairly small. It's not a very large camera, per se. Let me move a couple things so you guys can get a good look at it here. It's, uh, it's a fairly small camera, small and compact. These are my hands, as you guys can see. So it's going to be smaller than like your Canon uh, Mark III or Canon 60, other Canon DSLR bodies. It's even smaller than really a Canon T3i. Uh, you do have uh, a couple different functions. You know, you do have the option to go photo or video. Now, in my opinion, uh, the photography aspect of it is acceptable, but it's not that great. But again, it is more of a dedicated video camera than it is a photography camera. The video works really well. Um, so let's go over a few of the things that I like about the camera and why I like them. Um, so as I mentioned, it's very small. Uh, it does have a touch screen, so you can control it with, with by hand, a touch screen in the back, which is very nice. And uh, unfortunately, controlling your like ISO aperture and shutter speed, you can really only control your shutter uh, or your aperture from up here. And the shutter and the ISO need to be controlled from the menu system, which I will show you guys here in a second. So it does take a little time to get used to the system. But once you get, it took me like maybe three or four days before I got really proficient with the menu system and getting the lighting and settings the way I needed it. Um, as fast as possible. Now this is only a one inch sensor. So the sensor built into this camera is only one inches. So it's not a very large sensor. It's not full frame like the Canon 60 Mark III 5DS. Um, again though, this is more of a dedicated video camera, not a DSLR camera. Um, so uh, it does do 4K video at 305 megabytes per second. So you're going to run your card up very quick. Uh, I used a 64 gigabyte uh, CFast 2 SanDisk card. They're $400 for 64 gigabytes. Now you're gonna get 30 minutes of actual shooting time out of that. So you get 30 minutes of shooting time with a 64 gigabyte card. So you're gonna run through footage very fastly. So depending on what you're shooting and what you're doing, um, it takes a while. That was one frustrating th part about this. I only had one CF, uh, CF uh, card, too, with me. And I would run 30 minutes up pretty quick, and then I'd have to wait about 45 minutes to download it, and then I could format it and use the card over again. So it's kind of expensive, but this is kind of the way uh, video cameras are going. Um, so these cards should be interchangeable with other cameras out there, which is going to be really nice. Uh, now, it does do pictures. It is a 13.36 13.36 megapixel camera, so not a lot of megapixels, but it's still going to take a fairly nice picture. Um, and that will run off the SD. So, you, so CF will, will do video, and then the SD card will capture the uh, pictures. Um, I'm not sure if you could actually capture a video to the SD card or not. Um, I didn't have a fast enough SD card to do it. So maybe if you have one of these CFast 2 cards, um, you can also do it with the SD card. I'm not actually not sure about that. Again, I mentioned 30 minutes of footage. Um, the autofocus works fairly well on it. And really the cool thing about the way the autofocus is set up, again, you have the touch screen. So if you're shooting video and you're, and you're focusing, say I'm shooting a tutorial 
on um, a specific uh, product and I'm bouncing between me and a uh, close-up of the product, I just have to tap on the screen and it will autofocus for me. Now you do have manual focus, but the autofocus is pretty, pretty intuitive. It's pretty good. It can take a second to autofocus, but it's not that slow. But again, all you'd have to do is just hit different parts of the back of the screen where you want the camera to autofocus and it will go in and autofocus, which is really, really nice. It does have time code built in um, for audio people out there where you're going to need time code. So you do have that kind of professional uh, setting built into the camera, which is really nice. The menu system on the camera is pretty nice. Uh, if anybody uses the Sony a7S, it's a very similar menu system. Or any of the new ca uh, Canon DSLRs, like the 5DS, um, they've switched over to a different kind of menu system um, where you have one menu and you have mul uh, sub menus underneath, and in, in each sub menu you've got different settings. So instead of just having one menu and then all of your settings under each menu, you have, a, you have multiple sub-menus underneath a single menu now, which I really like. Um, it gives the option to get more stuff put into the menu system, and you're not doing as much scrolling down. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it does have a headphones and a mic jack, so you are able to do monitor your audio as well as, uh, as capture audio externally, which is really nice, and it works really well, and it's pretty simple to get into and... Uh, turn that on or off. Um, again, that's that all goes into your setting system, which uh, I will guy, I will show you guys here in a minute. It does have the Canon log, uh, but the Canon log is a minimum of 500 ISO. So that means that your ISO has to be is the lowest your ISO will go is 500 with the Canon log. But you're going to get a much more flat image, um, allowing you to do better color correction um, in in post. You do have three custom function button. So you've got one custom function button right here, as you guys can see right there on the back. You've got uh, two more custom function buttons here, uh, which, is really, which is really nice. I have one set up to push, push focus. If I wanted to just autofocus on its own, I can just push this, this button and, it will, and it, will just, it will just try to autofocus on the points I've got set up. Uh, I have a stabilized one set up. And I actually forget what my third custom um, function is. As well, if you want to do your f-stop, that's going to be on the wheel here at the top. But like I said, you cannot, you cannot set up like an ISO uh, in your custom function button so that you could control the uh, ISO, unfortunately. That has, you have to go into the menu system to change your ISO. All right. Um, so the highest uh, f-stop it will go to is 11 which uh, I found kind of hard if I was shooting in a very bright day. Uh, even with the ND filter on, it still could be a little bright um, at the, with the Canon log going down to as low as a 500 ISO. So what I did is I had B&H when they sent this out to me. Again, thank you B&H for sending this out and letting me test this out. Uh, so what I did is I, I just got a little Tiffin. And this, I think these are like, I want to say $80, but they might be a little bit more. And, uh, and it's got a little Tiffin filter that goes right on the front of it. And it gives me uh, an extra, I think, four or five stops. So I can get, a, uh, I can get my f-stop to around like a 16, maybe an 18 with this, uh, allowing me to get uh, enough stops of light so that I can get the balance of light that I need for my shot. Uh, they have, I think this is really unique. They have an exhaust vent on the side uh, right behind the screen. There's, a, there's an actual, it says exhaust vent. I guess it gets really hot. Very interesting. It does have Wi-Fi built in. I did not use that at all. As well as you guys notice, your screen, you know, you don't have the side out, flip out sides like the Rebel series. But then again, this screen really did what I needed it to do. So um, it does have an eyepiece, which is really cool. Uh, so if you guys are, are wanting to, to, to be able to look through it through an eyepiece, and I'll set this up for you guys real quick. Okay, and it's really simple. And then you just put that on right here, as you guys can see. And then you can, so you do have some different ways you can angle it. And so you do have the option of an eyepiece. I didn't use it much. I found it much easier to control everything with the touch screen and not using the eyepiece. Like I said, I had this camera for the last almost 30 days. I shot with it almost every single day that I had it. Um, so I got a lot of use out of it. And uh, now you're going to hear what my true opinion of this camera really is after I kind of went over some of the functions and aspects of it. Okay, so 
far as the menu system goes, the menu system is, is, is fairly easy to navigate, but it does take you a day or two to really get it down. Once you get it down, it, it doesn't take long uh, for you to, to, to switch your settings, but I do wish that the settings could have been switched faster. I do wish there were a better system for controlling my ISO after and shutter, like the Canon 60, the Mark III, the 5DS. You can switch that thing like boom, boom, boom. Where here, you've got to go through a couple sub-menus to be able to control it. So that's a little frustrating. Now, like I said, you can do the f-stop with the will. There's a will at the top that will control your f-stop, so you do have control over that. Um, I don't really see this camera being a great camera for professional videographers, for people that are shooting, uh, you know, something like a music video, this is probably gonna work just fine for. But anything outside of um, a low budget music video, I would really look at the C300, the Mark II, the C300 Mark II. Um, there, there are nicer cameras out there that aren't too high at the price point, that offer you 4K. For me, for what I do for my YouTube channel, and for other YouTube channel people, other people that do reviews, that do a lot of very similar things that I do with my YouTube channel, this camera may be the best camera on the market that I've come across that I've played around with because it is so easy to set up. Um, you, for what I need, I'm usually not gonna be needing to go any higher or any lower than a 24 millimeter or any higher than a 244 millimeter to do a camera review, to teach a class, um, to teach you guys techniques that I've learned. Um, you, this camera is gonna do just about everything that I need it to do, which I just, I love that. Um, it gives me 4K. Now, the uh, CF cards are really expensive for it. So, you know, you're gonna be out a lot, over three, $3,000 for this setup, um, but it's gonna allow you to get really nice 4K video um, for the run and gun, for the photojournalist, for the low budget um, music video. This thing is gonna be great for it. As well, it does offer, and I, one thing I did not mention was you can move this around. So depending on how you need to shoot, you are able to, you are able to move your grip around, which is nice. The grip is very comfortable. Uh, it was very easy to hold all day long. It's very easy to hold it and get a nice solid shot as you move it side to side, up and down. Um, again, you can use your eyepiece. You know, you can look right into that. So, um, you know, for me, this camera is, is maybe the perfect camera for, for the type of work I do. This is, this, I can set this up faster than I can set up a DSLR for video. So when I wanna shoot video, when I wanna do like, like I'm doing a review on this, I could have set this up much faster. Um, then I set my DSLR up to, to shoot the review of this product here. Um, so for $3,000, this camera is amazing for what it does. The thing is, it, it, in my opinion, and you can use it for whatever you want. I'm not telling you you can't go out and, and shoot a million dollar budget on this. What I'm saying is, it's more practical to buy and uh, spend a little bit more money and get a nicer 4K camera. Um, but for that photo journalist, you know, someone that needs a really small body, like when I was traveling, you know, um, we were out hiking 10, 15 miles in a day. Um, I had my DSLR equipment with me as well as I had as I had my my uh, XC10. This thing is really small. It really breaks down to a small size. Um, so therefore, it didn't take up a lot of extra room in my bag, and it was very easy to access and shoot video, you know, really quick, set my settings up. Again, once you get those menus down, it's pretty quick. Get those settings set up, and, uh, and then, you know, shoot the video that you need to shoot. So um, this is my review, my opinion, on the Canon XC10. Uh, I would highly look at it. Um, if you guys get a chance, if you have a, a local... Uh, store that allows you to kind of play around with some of the equipment. Uh, I know some places do. Um, go check this out. This thing is a, is a nice little video camera for what it is. Um, again, like I said, for me, this thing works great for my style of shooting, for what I do for my YouTube channel. Um, for, you know, I, I, I travel a lot, so I'm, I, I like to have a nice video camera with me. Um, DSLR does take a little bit longer, as well as I shoot on the Canon 60 when I'm doing video. Not the 60, but the 60, and uh, and it doesn't have autofocus. You know, manual focus is nice. This offers manual focus, but sometimes autofocus is just so much quicker. Now, this does have uh, a couple functions on the wheel at the top, um, and I'll read those off to you. You've got manual AV, TV, P, auto, and then scene. So if if you don't if you don't want to mess with if you just want to do kind of 
point and shoot kind of style, you do have that option where you can turn this um, on to auto and it will auto automatically kind of set up the settings that it thinks you need. So this camera offers a lot for what it is. Now, people that are wanting to shoot in low light, this is not the best low light camera. At 3200 ISO, I did start to lose um, quality of image. Uh, again though, it's a one inch sensor. It's very impressive uh, how well it functions for a one inch sensor. Um, anyways, I'm going to add a link to this right after the video. And if you guys want to click on it, go, go to B&H, they're uh, one of my sponsors. And if you guys are interested, it'd be great if you purchased it. If it's something that you're interested in going, if you're interested in purchasing or something you are going to go on and purchase it, it does help me out. Um, if not, you know, go check it out. Look at the specs um, right there on B&H's website. There'll be a link, a uh, picture and a link right after this video, right on the video, but after we finish this review. Um, as well, I'm going to add in some graded and, and non-graded uh, video footage that I shot with this, um, with the Canon with the Canon log and uh, so you guys can actually kind of see some of the footage I was able to capture um, with this while I was using it for the last month. Um, I'm kind of sad to send this back. Uh, the 5DS is probably the most favorited thing that I've gotten from B&H, but this is right there with it. I'm gonna be really sad to send this back to B&H because this camera, uh, for me, for what I do, is, is really amazing. So I'll catch you guys next time. Enjoy the footage and uh, the, the, the stock, the test footage that I got, enjoy that. And uh, again, I'll catch you guys next time. There'll be a link right at the end of this video to go click and check this out on B&H's website. Have a good one, guys. I was gonna do an overlay showing you guys the menu system, but I decided that this would be a better way to explain it. So I added this little uh, bit at the end of the video. So sorry for people that were hoping that they were going to see uh, test footage, but that's coming after this. So uh, your f-stop's gonna be right here. And like I said, the wheel does control your f-stop. It lets you know what your shutter is, your ISO, and your other, uh, other information, um, like your audio. You're gonna be able to turn your audio in and out in this menu system. Um, far as controlling your settings, uh, how much time left you've got on your battery. It does take the LPE6 battery, which is the same battery as the Canon 60, Mark III, uh, and a handful of other full frame cameras that Canon has put out. Uh, it also lets you know the frame rate and how many megabits per second, megabytes per second that it is shooting. So to go into the menu system, you could hit in on this, this piece right here, just push in, or you since it's touch screen, you go there, okay? So we have iris, which is the same thing as aperture, as you guys can see, and you can change your aperture. And like I was mentioning, we'll just we'll push in, we'll push in here, and then I can change that. And again, it maxes out at an F11. Uh, we have shutter. Again, I keep my shutter speed at double my frame rate. So if my frame rate is 24 frames per second, I'll have my shutter speed at 48. That's something you kind of want to be pretty meticulous on doing if you can, unless you have to change your shutter. This, this, this does allow you to drop your shutter way down, but if you drop your shutter down to like one half, oh man, the, the video looks so choppy. Um, so uh, if you are shooting at a higher frame rate, let's say you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then we would bring our shutter up to 120. Um, again, that's just kind of a standard for film when you're shooting, when you're shooting video. Uh, you have your ISO. You can go in and change your ISO. It does max out at 20,000, I believe. But for me, I'm really not going above 3,200 if I can help it. Uh, Calvin temperature. Kelvin temperature. Uh, you can custom set that if you want. So that, and then you push in here, and then that allows you to see. But see how many extra steps I had to do to get there? Um, Let's just back out so you guys can see that. So function, Kelvin, then hit Kelvin down here. Then I got to hit this over here. And now I can finally change my Kelvin temperature. It's kind of frustrating. It's kind of almost too many steps in that aspect. I could exit back out. We'll go to the function. Uh, so we'll hit this. You do have the option. So if I want it to run off automatic or if I want it to do external, and then you can control externally how much power. Um, so this will automatically kind of set it. You can go to manual, which is also going to give you the option for external um, use and then how loud it needs to be. So you can figure out where you're peaking. As of right now, I got really loud. Sorry, guys. But if you saw it peaked a little bit, so maybe I want to drop that a little bit. Uh, then you do have the options for zebras, uh, peaking, and uh, your stabilization, I believe. is Yeah, the, the IS, the stabilization, which I do have one of my menu settings set to that or one of, my, one of the three uh, 
pre pre settings. I have that option turned. I believe it's on number three, and I can turn my IS on and off. Now let's look at picture styles. Which really, if you guys are shooting film, uh, you should be shooting uh, the Canon log is what I shoot. But you do have options to change that. Uh, uh, you have your audio scene again. I probably just leave that there. Um, and so, and then this is the image image stabilizer image stabilizer as well, which you can turn on and off. So that's the that's the, like the immediate functions you're going to need to like get your lighting and settings down right off the bat. Those are like your quick functions in a manner of speaking. So uh, now, if you just want to go to menu, we can just hold menu down, and then the menu. The, here's kind of what the menu system does look like. Um, you know, you can have the ND filter turned on or off. Um, I believe ND filter is one of the options I have set up on one of my displays here. Um, so I have one and two, and this is where you turn your uh, manual and autofocus. I leave it on autofocus, it works great. That's the exhaustment I was talking about earlier. Um, and so my, my preset menu systems here, I believe one has, uh, I have it set on for ND filter so I can turn the ND filter on and off. Um, we can navigate. Sometimes I find it easier to navigate with this. Um, so, but again, you do have the touch screen option. But if you do have this guy on, your eyepiece, then, then you're going to have to navigate everything with this button right here. Uh, so we can go to video, and it does shoot not at 4K. I think 4K, the highest you can get is 30 frames per second at 4K. Um, if, but if you do want to switch to HD clips, and I don't have a memory card in there, unfortunately. I think it will shoot up to 60 frames per second. It gives you that option. Let's see here. I did not use, uh, yeah, so you can get up to 60 frames per second at 50 megabytes uh, per second. Um, that is an option. And so you've got a few other options with audio um, and Wi-Fi. I did not use any of the Wi-Fi functions, so I really can't let you know what I thought of that. Um, and yeah. If you do want to uh, format it, it, it's a little bit different than I've seen it in the past uh, with like DSLR cameras. The format is called initialize, and you can format it right here, and then you would uh, initialize it. So there's a quick look at the menu system. Um, hopefully that helped you guys out. Uh, like I said, really like the camera for what I do, and I really feel like what it was built for was that that run and gun. Uh, someone that needs a small, lightweight camera that can shoot pretty pretty impressive 4K. Um, it, it really worked well for that. You guys have a great day, and uh, as always, we'll catch you next time. Hey guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now, if you like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we've got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter. And you can follow us as we do our short tweets.